Welcome back to ABC News Live. First, it is almost Thanksgiving and winter storms are moving across the country, threatening to disrupt some travelers' holiday plans. But climate scientists say not to let those colder temperatures fool you. Our climate is being affected by global warming. And here's our chief meteorologist and chief climate correspondent, Ginger Z, with our latest installment of Climate A to Z. The leaves are turning, and the first hint of chill is in the air. But as soon as I post about the cold, like we're in the Northeast, and we've got at least three record lows in Appalachia this morning, I inevitably will get a post. Yep, there it is. Global warming, LOL. Now, on the same day, I'll post about record smashing heat in a different part of the country. And then I'll get a comment that says something like, talk about the cold, or wait, that's not on your agenda. First of all, my only agenda is to share scientifically accurate information. Second, for the gentleman who wrote, but honey, I'm in the deep south, and if we had global warming, I don't think I'd have a jacket on. That's not how climate works. So let me explain, because you're not alone. A lot of people don't understand the difference between climate and weather. How can we have sweatshirt weather, or even the first snow, if the whole globe is getting warmer and warmer? As the globe warms, you know, we're going to have cold and, of course, snow. Because if that all abruptly stopped, it would be really scary. But a cold day is just that, a cold day. And a hot day is just a hot day. The temperature and conditions on one day, well, that's called weather. Now, if you walk outside and almost every day is hot or almost every day is dry, that's called climate. Let's pretend that these little pumpkins are record lows and the big pumpkins are record highs. So you start to get more and more record highs and that gives you an average. This whole thing is getting warmer. Still not quite getting it? That's okay. I like to think about weather as your mood and climate as the state of your mental health. Nobody wakes up happy every day. Well, except Micah Strahan. But seriously. Nobody wakes up in the exact same emotional state every single day. You might have one day happy, 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 sad, happy, happy, sad, but the overall average is happy. If every day is sad, except one, go get some help. But also, your average is sad. The point is that the climate, all the weather days all over the world, on average, is getting warmer. The other issue I see all the time geography of it all. When we say global warming, we mean the globe, the whole thing on average is warming, like the whole planet. So it's not your city or your county or your backyard at any given moment. While it's snowing in Montana, the whole globe is still warming. Interesting stuff. And Ginger Z joins us now to break this down a little bit further. So, Ginger, places in the Northeast got up to 80 degrees mm -hmm. on Halloween. And I have to confess, as a mom taking trick-or-treaters around, I welcomed that. Right. <laughs> but how concerned should we be that we're seeing more of these warm days at times when we used to see colder temperatures? Right. So that's where we see our climate shifting. And so rather than just one Halloween that's warm, it's that we're seeing more record high temperatures on average than we are seeing record lows. We've got a graphic here, so it'll help you. Just through the 2000s, like this isn't even the last 15 years or so, but you see the percentage of record highs going up dramatically. When you have more record highs, you often have them all together as well, which then means you've got longer stretches. And with a changing climate, a warming climate, we anticipate longer heat waves with more more intensity and more duration. And so the whole thing kind of speaks to itself, but not one Halloween isn't going to tell you that you have a warming mm. globe. It's that everybody's got more of those. And, and I, I, this came, comes up in some of the comments I know you get on social media, but mm -hmm. like what happens on those really cold days? You know, right. the polar vortex yes. days. Does that balance things out at all? Is that also from climate change? How does that factor into this? It actually it can be. It, so there are a couple of things that we know about extreme cold. Extreme cold versus extreme heat, that's actually a symptom of a rapidly changing climate. So as the globe warms, we would see more of those. However, you'd see fewer, and I mean more of those juxtapositions, mm -hmm. but you still see fewer of the polar vortex times. And so that's kind of the general trend. Now, President-elect Trump has named New York Republican Lee Zeldin as his pick to head the mm -hmm. EPA. He's promised to roll back several environmental regulations, yes. even some on day one. So. 
Are there any regulations that you think, if they were to be rolled back, they would have an immediate impact, or are these more long-term things? Well, listen, the U.S. has been decreasing our emissions in general, uh, but very small amounts. We hold the legacy load, so we've got a long way to go when it comes to digging ourselves out of the hole we've made. Mm -hmm. um, but when you look at the world, China by far is nearly doubled our emissions. So you say, okay, so why do they not have to do it and we do? And that's kind of part of what the Trump administration is promising, is to roll back emissions regulations regulations or rules associated with power plants, uh, tailpipe emissions, and methane, among many others. So will you see an immediate impact, some, to air quality? But it's more about that longevity of what this means when it comes to emissions and the leadership that the United States can do. On the other hand, we very much are talking about a state-by-state -state rule, right? Like, that's kind of the point of the whole administration, is the state gets to decide. Mm. So many of the states that have already put in place some of these rules or regulations or maybe the clean energy incentives, they intend to keep those. Yeah, and I don't know if you can answer this, but is there any attempt to get more collaboration on a global scale, right? Because it's hard to make arguments for the U.S. to do one thing or this country to do if another country is completely disregarding all of that and we're all polluting the same air. Yeah, no, for sure. I, I, that would be the hope and wish of the world, right? That we all work together. Like the Montreal Protocol worked so well. Mm -hmm. And we've done this before where we've solved an environmental crisis globally. Uh, yes, the want is there. But China is the big one that people say, yeah, but what about China mm -hmm. if they don't do it? And I always say to them, what is around you right now? Look at all of the things around us. Where does that come from? Per capita, the United States still has the biggest emissions. China has less per capita, although they've got way more. Most of theirs is coming from industry. What are they making? It's actually stuff for us yeah. and stuff for the rest of the world. So we do have agency in that. And we do have the ability to slow that down by consuming less of the global market. And I know that's a whole different talk. Right, sure. But when we're talking about emissions, this isn't just about the politics of it. We have a vote of our dollar that we can actually make a difference in who is emitting what and where it's being made. What do you think is the biggest misconception people make when conflating climate and weather? Yeah, I think after the initial ones that I attacked there, like, oh, it's cold out, and so where's, how could the globe be warming? I think the next big one is people say, yeah, but the climate has always changed. And in an upcoming A to Z, we are going to attack that one. But in general, you look at that trend of our post-industrial uh, warming, and it is rapid. And there's this has happened in the past. We've seen the Sahara be green. We've seen ice in places that don't have it now. Our Earth does change, but there is one driving factor right now that we know is impacting that temperature, rapid warming, and that is the emissions. All right, our chief meteorologist, chief climate scientist, Ginger Z. Ginger, always Hi. great to have you, thank you. Great to be here.